dami ng dala ko ngayong umaga okay i have my speaker because of my demonstration i have my uh, yan ako ako ng laptop here laptop then uh, yung aking uh, yung projector na hiniram ko at kung ano-ano pa pero ako isa nakalimutan nakalimutan ko ang isa kong bag no so aking vlog yung aking black bag ang nalimutan ko sa bahay Diyos mio paano na hindi ko alam ba't ko nalimutan okay goodness Good morning. Good morning, Sir Mike. So, uh, you are ready to put your chairs. I don't like to see any bags, okay? In your, on top of your table, of course, okay? So, uh, we'll be having our uh, another another lesson this morning. It is, I think it's easy. I reset it so that you can, uh, we will continue that tomorrow up to the end of the topic, okay? So this is, of course, developing a concept paper. So before that, of course, I would like to give you first the objectives. Define what a concept paper is. Identify situations in which a concept paper may be effectively used to improve the society and determine the ways a writer can elucidate on a concept by using definition and etc. Anyway, this morning we're going to concentrate on the definition and the different types or kinds of, of uh, definitions, okay? So, uh, so let's have a review of the previous uh, topic that we had. There are three major ways that authors present an argument. Okay, now that. Three of three, no? Okay, <laughs> three for Mr. Ho. Okay, so reasoning. So, what is reasoning, Mr. Uh, Oppo? Reasoning is a thought explanation about, about the topic that, or about the issue, about the stand or position that the writer choose. Okay, so that's reasoning. Okay, the reason if you're talking about argument, you're going to present reasons and then uh, things. Okay, to, to support the claim, for example, or to support your stand in an issue. And the last one is, of course, appeal. What is appeal? I'm just here. Okay, to stimulate the, the reader's emotion, for example. And there are different kinds of appeal that I, uh, that I asked you, okay, that I told you before. We have the logical appeal, the emotional appeal, and so on and so forth. It depends upon what kind of appeal you're going to, to use. You're going to get, of course, the elephant paper or in your notebook, okay? For idea about a certain word, you're going to give your own word, for example. What is your idea? Okay, let's have, for example, the uh, significance. Any answer? What's significance for you? It's crucial. Okay, of course, to him. How about the uh, other answer for significance here? Is there Oppo? Significance is one of the synonyms of the word important. Okay, one of the synonyms of the word important. How about again? Words again, would you please read, Mr. Oppo? Direction. 
give the dictated meaning of the following words. You can use your dictionary apps from your mobile phones or your Google. This time I am allowing all my students to use their dictionary apps. What's the meaning of the significance here? Any, 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 uh, yes, please, come to them. Okay, the importance of building something. Any, any answer? How about number two? In, yes, dear. Action or? Okay, the color thing. Another answer for the collection, Mr. Miss, do you have? Another answer for recollection. Okay, how about number five? System. No, sir. You can now uh, compare the difference, okay, of your connotation and the denotated meaning of the words. Okay, so if we're talking about dedicated, sometimes you will hear sick people saying, you know, it could it, it connotes that, blah, 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 whatsoever is the answer. So it really comes to your mind easily. What is your, uh, what is your connotation about change, for example? So there's a, in a, in a zap, okay, there's an answer, okay, from your, from your mind, okay? So, uh, Let's have now the, uh, the topic today, which is class of paper. So, uh, class of paper class is a short summary that, of course, tells the reader what the project is, why it is important, and how it will be carried out. So, in all, of course, all research projects need a class of paper. Okay, why? In of your research, you should know what is your purpose, what's really the goal, what is really your plan, okay? What is our concept, the reason you are what? You are talking, you are discussing within the group, okay? You said that, but you're going to discuss something. So, this is also the references, not including, not including the references. You spend it to what to 250 words. You can pack out 500 or 250 words. Remember that you're in a group. You can do that. Then we have the introduction. It is to present the scope and purpose of your paper. And this section is based on the idea of your claim or of your stand. What's the title, for example, of your, uh, for example, of your essay or whatsoever, or of your research? In the body, what the I told you for some of them also during our oral call when you are going to write, for example, your uh, your speech. In the body, you're going to include everything that you would like to include, okay? Uh, even the figures, even the, uh, the statistical uh, data whatsoever, it's in the body. The course is the conclusion. Read, please. Yes, miss. See, miss, see there, you see there. Okay, in the conclusion, oh, sorry, okay. in the conclusion, that is the summary what you have written there. Uh, but of course, according to, to this one, it's the easiest to write since you will be referring to the previous parts you drafted before you go to the conclusion but of course in the letter writing it's a different way the the difficult one is how you're going to introduce to make your introduction and writing no next of course is this one a passive paper may be explained through different modes or patterns okay remember that a passive paper may be explained through different modes or patterns we have definition explication and explanation. That's the spell of, of explanation, huh? Okay, but of course we're going to to focus first this morning or to the, uh, a dozen of roses, for example. Okay, there's another one. Uh, it, correct me if I'm wrong. K10 plus 2. Okay, you hear that? In the newspaper, K10 plus 2. Now let's go back here for using definition. So, of course, there are different types of definition. Uh, we have the formal sentence definition, 
In the formal sentence definition, this includes the term, the class or the genus, and the class is the group where the term belongs. And the distinguishing features of the term, the qualities that make the term unique, the uniqueness of that particular term. Okay. Now here of the term, the class, the distinguishing feature, a bicycle, that's the term, class is a mode of transport. Distinguishing feature of the bicycle is that it has two wheels and is powered through the pedaling effort of the rider. Other example of banana, that's the term. Class is a type of fruit. And then distinguishing features, which is rich in vitamin C and is good for the heart. That's the story of the features. Only the term and the class. Without the distinguishing features, it's more easy than the other one. We have here, example, a chair is a piece of furniture. That's the class, a piece of furniture. A pen is used in writing. Now, number three is the extended definition. It's an essay length text that used different rhetorical patterns to show the meaning of a particular term, show cause and effect relationship to provide the reader a holistic or complete definition of a term. Now, so let's work here. So uh, I'm going to group you here. Then you're going to write the formal definitions of the following terms. How to make everything easy. This is group. Group one. This one and this one. Group one. Oh, okay. Group two. Group one. Group one. Group two. Group three. Group four. Group five. Write the formal definitions of the following terms. Time starts now. Thank you so much, AD and Thank you, good morning.